Breckenridge is located about 105 miles west of the Denver airport. The town is fairly large with a population of about 4,500 people. Despite the many hotels, condos, and rent houses, the town, in my opinion, comes down to the half mile stretch of South Main Street. South Main Street is where you find the majority of the shopping and restaurants. The town has a great western feel during the day, but I prefer the night. At night, the city lights up with white Christmas lights and gives the town all of its charm. But this is why most people go to Breckenridge. It's the skiing. In this review, I'll only cover the areas around Peak 9. The skiing here is excellent, especially if you're new. They're some of the easiest runs I've been on, and plenty of beginner runs to choose from. They also have their fair share of advanced runs too. As you can see, this green run is fairly flat. I'm no expert, and this is just my fourth time skiing. If you're looking to learn, and you want to go to a nice easy place, this is it. There are also plenty of lifts on the mountain to get you just about any place you want to go. Lines were minimal, except early in the morning when they can be a little slow. Weekends are much heavier when the locals from the surrounding towns come in. This is about as bad as it gets right here on this green. And I can handle it pretty decently, pretty easy. Nothing to it, piece of cake. This is part of the ski school over here. This is exactly where I learned about four years ago. Go up this little hill here. Whee! I love doing that one. That one's fun. On peak nine, about midways up the mountain, is 10 Mile Station. This is a rest stop of sorts where you can get something to eat, drink, or just relax for a while. During lunch times, this place can get pretty busy. You'll need a good grip on patience if you visit them. They do have a small shop for some essential items if you need them, like chapstick and sunscreen. The outside deck is a pretty happening place, although not when I filmed this. So we're at the 10 mile station and uh, you can come get some food, some drinks, all that kind of good stuff. And I decided to get me a Red Bull. And an eight ounce Red Bull is $4.50. The prices are crazy, but if you don't want to go back down and eat the base you want to eat up here, this is where you probably want to go. But the food isn't that great. Just basically cafeteria food for the most part, you know, sandwiches and hamburgers and pizza and you know, some salads and whatnot. So, you want to eat on top of the hills or on top of the ski slopes? Bring you some cash because you're going to need it. Four dollars fifty cents, baby. Crazy. So you've never been skiing and you don't know where to start. I always start here in Denver at the Sports Authority. Now this is my choice and it may not be yours. They're just my preference. I go there to rent my ski gear and get my lift tickets. My advice on renting ski gear is shop and shop a lot prior to your trip. I rented my skis and boots for about $20 per day. The other thing you'll need is lift tickets. Now I buy my lift tickets when I arrive in Denver and you can get them in some of the other surrounding towns as well. Don't buy them at the base of the lifts. That is where you're gonna pay the most for your lift tickets. Most ski rental retailers offer lift tickets that are sold through kiosks like this one. You can also buy them through a local grocery store like King Supers. My lift ticket was a three out of five. That means the ticket is good for three days after the first use for five consecutive days. The cost was $300 or about $100 per day. If you're new to skiing, you're not gonna need anything over a three day lift ticket. Trust me on this. If you're gonna need ski lessons, you're gonna buy those tickets for your ski lessons at the base, and don't worry about the lift ticket because the price of the lift ticket is in your lessons. Cost of the lessons are gonna run you about $135 per day. 
If you never ski before, prepare to fall a lot. Her first time to fall, only her second day, her second time skiing, she only managed to fall once. On her second time. That's right, because I've only I've only managed to fall once. She's fell once. Pretty good. During January, Breckenridge hosts the International Snow Carving Championship. The event hosts about 16 teams from all around the world. When they start carving all these ice sculptures, they start out of this. A giant block of snow that's been packed down. It's hard as, I, uh, hard as a rock. And then they start carving it. And then it turns into some pretty amazing works of art. They draw and chisel on the blocks for five days, working day and night. They start with carving away big chunks and then gradually start shaping the snow to more refined definition. The work is non-stop and through the night. Eventually the art starts to come to life and the finishing touches are completed. It's amazing to see how these blocks of ice are turned into works of art. Some of the art is kid friendly and they're allowed to climb all over it and pose for photos. Unfortunately, not all sculptures are able to be completed. Some just can't bear the pressure. Most make it and are left for the public to enjoy and vote on. During the night, these giant snowballs are lit up for extra layer of visual effect. In the end, Mongolia won, which was my favorite. I primarily ate my condo while in Breckenridge to save money, but I tried two restaurants for dinner. One was Steak and Rib, which is located at 208 North Main Street. A Google search listed the restaurant titled as Fine Dining in the Heart of Breckenridge. Fine it's not, however it was good food. The restaurant has a western Colorado feel like the old mining days. So we ordered some chicken wings, of course. You get nothing but drumettes. They're definitely good. Put a little sauce on them. The wings were smoking. Cost $10.95. The main course consisted of surf and turf for me for $38.95, which consisted of a bacon wrap, five ounce filet, and a small lobster tail. The Miz had a lamb T bone for $31.95. The steak was delicious. Now cost was a little steep in my opinion, about $95. With a tip, $115. You can read more at their website, steakandribrestaurant.com. The other restaurant was Michael's Italian Restaurant located at 326 South Main Street. Now this place was more reasonably priced. We started off with some delicious meatball sliders for $8.25. The Miz had white lasagna for $17. And I had the chicky fettuccine Alfredo for $17. Both were delicious. Total bill, including tip, $57. I highly recommend Michael's Italian Restaurant, but it comes with one exception. The crowd is horrendous. Expect long wait times, as they're always busy. Try getting there really early or really late for quicker seating. We arrived at 8 o'clock, and we still had to wait an hour for a table. For lodging, there are many choices. I stayed at Main Street Station, located at the base of Peak 9. The rate with taxes was about $338 per night. You can click the link at the end of this video to see my review of the Main Street Station. If you want to see more about Breckenridge, click on one of the video links. Or you can click on subscribe for future updates and other destinations.